I get a lot of messages and comments with people asking me various questions and one of the most common things that I get asked is I can't do this or I can't do that and what am I doing wrong? And the simple answer to that is without seeing you play it's almost impossible for me to be able to say. I've made lots of videos about how to do certain fundamental aspects of the game like the stance, how you grip the cue, the bridge hand etc etc and hopefully they help people out but how do you know whether you're actually doing them right? It's fairly easy to tell that something's wrong because you might be consistently missing a certain kind of shot or even just not being able to hit the ball in a straight line. Often people will just come up with quite random reasons, oh it must be because of this or because of that, and they haven't really checked that to have any evidence to prove it. Or more often than not, people will just blame an outside factor rather than themselves, like oh the table rolled out or the cushions are dead or I must have got a kick. If you really want to improve and become a better player, it's vital that you can recognise your own faults and then work to correct them. So there are a few ways to do this. Firstly would be to have someone watch you play and try and spot any faults in your technique. Now this is all well and good but obviously it requires another person and it also needs to be someone who knows what they're looking for. So someone who's fairly proficient in the game and is in a good position to be able to give you advice. And just as importantly it needs to be someone that you're willing to accept criticism from. But for most people who are practicing on their own, either down the pool hall or at home if they're lucky enough to have a table, they need a way to be able to self-analyze. By far the easiest way to do this is to film yourself. So many people these days have got a mobile phone capable of recording video. Some are obviously better than others, but just being able to closely study footage of yourself is a really useful way to try and spot any errors that you might be making. The first thing to try and do is to fix the camera however you can. So what I mean by this is not have the camera moving. So getting someone to hold the phone and film you is just going to have far too much movement in the footage for you to really be able to see what's going on. If you have access to a tripod then that's ideal as it will allow you to lock the camera in various positions, heights and angles. This doesn't need to be anything fancy and I've put a couple of links in the description to reasonably priced ones that you can pick up online. But if you don't have a tripod, don't worry, this is something that most people are not going to have. And there are lots of ways of just propping your phone up somewhere on a solid surface that's going to keep it nice and still. So what do you need to film? Now, more often than not, the single most likely cause of not being able to make a pot is that you're not delivering the cue in a straight line. There's lots of factors that govern whether we can actually do that or not, so we need to look at various things from various perspectives. So if we're looking to deliver the cue in a straight line, then ideally we want the camera to be in line with the line of the cue. So that might be directly above the cue, head on to the cue, directly behind the cue, or side on and parallel to the cue. Filming from any sort of angle might be useful to see some things, but it makes it difficult to see if the cue is staying straight. Once you're happy with your setup, film lots of takes. On any given shot you might play it perfectly first time round, or you might unintentionally strike the cue ball to one side. What you're looking for is what you do consistently. So film the same thing as many times as you can so that you've got a good sample set to look at. And if you're aware of an error as you play the shot, so maybe you're missing to one side, don't try to correct that on each go as you're filming this. You want to see what you do naturally when you get down to a shot in a game. If you're trying to correct things on each take, then you might be introducing other faults and that's going to make it very confusing when you watch things back. Just get down and do what you do naturally several times, even if you know that it's wrong. Once we have our footage, then we need to be able to study it in detail. And this is where it can get a little tricky. Basically, you need to be able to do two things. The first is that you need to be able to jog through your footage one frame at a time. You can try watching at full speed, but the action is often far too fast for you to really see what's going on. Going through it one frame at a time will really let you focus on the details. 
The second is having some way of creating a reference line. You need to be able to see how your cue moves in relation to a dead straight line. Now you could do all of this on your phone um, and there's lots of apps that might help you to be able to do this but personally I think it's easier to study things on a bigger screen so I transfer my videos onto a computer. There are countless bits of software available that will allow you to create some sort of overlay and I'm not going to go into those in detail because that's a whole other video in itself. Luckily for me, I work as an animator for a living, so I use Adobe After Effects for my job. And that's what I use for creating all the lines and the graphics that you see in my videos. This is obviously a professional software, and you certainly don't need anything like that just to be able to draw a straight line. Um, and if anyone's got any suggestions of any free software that other people could use for this, then maybe list it in the comments below. If you're not great with computers and you can't find anything that will allow you to do this, then just physically holding up a straight line to the screen is probably more than good enough. So we've got our footage to study and I've set up this slightly flawed example just to show how we might go about diagnosing a problem. Playing the cue ball straight up and down the table, on the majority of the shots the cue ball is coming back to the right hand side of the cue. So let's see if we can work out what's actually going on. So starting from the side on view, we can see on the first attempt that the cue ball comes back to the right of the cue. So now it's just a case of going through and checking off things that we know that we should be doing and just to see if any of them might be the cause. Firstly, I'm standing back and walking into the shot, so that's a good start. And then once I'm down on the shot, the bridge hand looks to be about the right distance from the cue ball. Um, I'm nice and low and the cue is fairly parallel and I have my chin just lightly touching it. So let's draw a line through the cue and watch as I feather back and forth. As we jog through this you can see that I'm dipping the butt of the cue just a little bit and you can see that the cue just drops below the chin a little and the front end comes up a touch. This could be a little better but it's unlikely to be causing the problem. Dropping up and down with the cue means that we might strike a little higher or lower than intended, but that shouldn't mean that the ball moves to the right. Also, several professional players have a slight drop in their swing, so it's not something to be too worried about, as long as it's not too extreme. The pause at the end of the backswing is a little short, but there is a slight pause there, and the cue follows through quite nicely. I'm also staying down on the shot after striking the cue ball. So there's a couple of little things there that could be tweaked, but nothing that really explains why the cue ball is coming back to the right every time. So let's have a look from the top view, and we'll draw a line through the centre of the cue ball. Now, even when I'm feathering here, there looks to be a bit of sideways movement on the cue. The tip's not staying on the line as it moves back and forth. And then when I actually push the cue through and strike the ball, you can see that it makes contact to the right of the centre. And that's even more exaggerated by the time I finish the follow through. This then tells us why the ball is coming back to the right. Because I'm striking the cue ball just to the right of centre, I'm applying a bit of right hand side onto the ball. So it spins to the right a little when it strikes the cushion. We now know why the ball is going where it does, but what am I doing that's causing me to strike the cue ball to the right of centre? It's not just a case of me just missing the middle of the ball, because I'm doing the same thing consistently on every shot. Whilst we can see that the cue is moving offline, there's nothing else in this bit of footage that really tells me why that's happening. So let's come around to the head-on view. If we draw a line through the shot, we can clearly see that the cue tip ends up to the right of the line. If we then move that line up, it gives us a vertical plane that we want the body to be moving in, in order to keep the cue straight. You can see the V of the bridge and the cue starting position are on line. I'm slightly right eye dominant, so there's a point just to the right of my nose that I'm also trying to keep in line, and the whole head is also nice and vertical. However, if you look at the tip of my elbow, you can see that it's sticking out to the right a bit. This means that as I move it towards my chest, it's bringing the butt of the cue inwards a little, which in turn pushes the tip of the cue out to the right. 
It may only seem like a small amount, but it's enough to consistently put unintended right hand side on the cue ball. Now that we know the cause, it's just a case of consciously thinking about whether that back elbow is in the same vertical plane as everything else and correcting it. Now with everything on the same line, the cue travels nicely through the center of the cue ball and comes back in a dead straight line to the tip of the cue. It's not always easy to see exactly what's going on and you may need to experiment with different views and angles to get to the bottom of very subtle problems. Using slow motion footage, if you have it, can help really pinpoint certain moments or getting really close in with the camera. There are obviously a lot of things to check for as well, and I'm not going to give you a list of all of the things here because there's so many. But if you watch some of my other videos about the various fundamentals of the game, then they should give you an idea of the sorts of things you should be looking out for. Knowing that something is wrong is one thing, but taking the time to really study what you're doing and being willing to accept your own flaws is vitally important if you want to improve your own game. If you want to see more practice routines and pool tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.